Norms are generally accepted patterns and standards of behavior within a group or a team. And in this video, I want to explore more about norms and how to develop them for your team. Norms often take the form of unstated, implicit rules for team members. And breaking those norms often incurs displeasure from team members or even social sanctions. Given that nobody likes rules, what then is the value of having norms within your team? Well, firstly, there's efficiency. If team members know how to react to certain situations, how to work with their colleagues, how to collaborate, how to get on, what sort of things to say and when to say them, then they can focus more on the work they need to do and the creativity and problem solving of the task at hand. If the group hasn't yet formed into a team, then there are no norms of behavior and therefore every time we need to interact, we potentially have to think through the best way to do it. And that can be distracting, it can sap our energy, and it can remove focus from the task at hand. A second value of norms is group identity. The team shares a set of norms, and therefore it feels like a coherent group, and it can separate itself from other groups and other teams that may have slightly different sets of norms of behavior. But even if the team next door has exactly the same norms of behavior, because we have settled on our norms, we feel they belong to us and therefore we feel like a group working together. And thirdly, our team's norms of behavior help to define our team in relationship to the wider organization. It sets the rules by which we interact with other groups, with other teams, and with the structures around us. This means we not only share a sense of identity, but we feel safe in representing the team and the work that the team is doing to the outside world because we know what we have to do and how we have to do it to conform to our norms of behavior. So where do norms come from? How do we form these norms of behavior? Well, there are two principal ways, and the first and most common is called convergence. The group converges on a set of norms as it forms itself into a team. Often, the norms that the team will adopt are something like the average of the kinds of behaviors that team members have experienced and felt comfortable with in the past. However, they can be toxic because sometimes team members bring norms of behavior that they've experienced and not necessarily felt comfortable with, but haven't internally challenged and tested. And the problem with these norms of behavior is that they tend to be sticky. Norms can be very resistant to change because they come about through a melding together of individuals to make a team. It's therefore crucial that you get the norms right at the start. So the second way that norms can come about is through leadership. If you are a team leader, you have a vital role in guiding and crafting the set of norms that the team adopt. And I don't say you should completely override the set of norms that the team is converging on and feels comfortable with, but you must look out for toxic behaviors. You must also think about the kinds of behaviors you want to encourage. And there are two principal ways that you can do this, that you can lead the team towards a healthy and productive and respectful set of norms of behavior. The first of these is by modeling the behaviors you want to see. If you want to see people showing gratitude for contributions and acting in a polite and courteous manner to one another, then you need to acknowledge and thank people for their contributions and be polite and courteous to the team members. The second way that you can lead the development of norms is by setting expectations. Stating 
your expectations for how you want people to behave and recognizing, acknowledging and praising contributions that meet those norms. If you reinforce behaviors that you consider are productive and conform to the kind of norms that you'd like to see the team develop, and you pick people up on behaviors that you think are toxic and do not correspond to the kind of norms you want, then you will gradually shift the balance. By and large, if convergence brings together a set of norms that is the average of the different norms the team members bring to the group, it's also true that that average tends to be a weighted average. All team members are not equal in their contribution to this convergence process. And if people look up to you as the leader, then the weight of your expectations and of your behaviors will be greater than other people's and will move the needle towards the kind of behaviors that you are demonstrating yourself and those that you set expectations for and recognize and reward. So what is it that norms cover? Well, they cover just about everything. So let's have a look at some examples. Norms can cover roles, what people do and how they contribute to the team. They can cover performance expectations, how we make and meet commitments and timeliness, how we ask for help and how we offer and give feedback to one another. They can cover altruism and cooperation and reciprocity, the give and take that makes a team a pleasure to be a part of. They can cover care and support for one another and how the team resolves conflict among its members. They can cover standards of courtesy and how those integrate with wider social standards and the different cultural expectations of team members. And of course, they can cover the standards of respectful behavior that you expect within the team. And we can contrast that with disrespectful behavior, which can become a norm of behavior in a toxic environment. And finally, norms can cover social activities, everything from making coffee to going out as a group after work. The development of respectful and productive norms of behavior is an important part of the transition as a team moves from the storming phase through the norming phase to the performing phase. Without productive and helpful norms, the team cannot reach that high performance stage. So when you have a team that is entering the norming stage, think about your role in guiding the norms of behavior that you want to see. Please do give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come, so please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video, and in the meantime, keep learning.